Hello, my name is Gareth Thomas and I'm making this video today to show you how I set up and format a letter. The style I use can be used for either business or personal letters and you can write as formally or as informally as you want in the body of the letter. I want to do this video because I've seen some pretty awful videos showing people how they should create a letter and to be honest they are shocking. Sorry to say this, but it's a fact. I'm not professing to be the best letter writer out there, but if you want or need to write a letter and be taken seriously, for example, when applying for a job or complaining about shoddy goods, then this style will help you out and you'll stand a much better chance than some of the letter formats that I've seen being created on YouTube. Being a native speaker, an English speaker, it comes easy for me, so I do understand how non-English speakers can get it so wrong, so I'm hoping to address the imbalance and get this out there for you to watch. I hope it helps. The first thing to do is to open your word processor on your computer. And as you can see, I have mine already open. Then click blank document. And a blank document should open up. OK, so here's my blank document. So the first thing you need to do is um, type in your letterhead or your typed heading. Now I don't use a letterhead so I don't need to worry about leaving spaces but this is what we're doing now letterhead or typed heading. What I do is I click the mouse there like that and I go to my center I put in the center and then I make the font about 12 I'll make it bold and then I type in um, my home address. So this is this is your address. This is where you reside. Okay. This is where somebody who is going to respond to you will write to you. Put your text in first, and then we'll center it. So it didn't actually take my my center. Then the next thing I put in is the telephone number, and I'll just put a a few in here. So I'll give you a, a couple of examples, and I'll explain. So you put in your telephone number and you. What I do is I put telephone number, I type that in, and I'll just bold it, and then I actually put in my telephone number. So if, for example, my telephone number was um, this one here, a normal landline number, then I'd put that in. So I'll just move that up. If, however, I have both a landline and a mobile number, I would put both in and I would have a little space between each of the mobile numbers. So there's the mobile and there's the landline telephone number. Um, or if I only had a mobile, I would probably make it very clear and just type in, rather than telephone number, I would just type in mobile number and I would embolden that as well. So that's how my header would look. Next thing I do is to leave a couple of spaces and I would then insert a table and it would be a one by a two by one table now the reason for this is because <clears throat> in this cell in this part of the table I'm going to align it to the right and this is where I put the date like so and you may be wondering oh but what about the lines don't worry I'll show you how to get rid of that and the next thing is I put in what's called the inside address or, or the address that the letter is going to like so and of course I will align it to the right so this is called the inside address this is the respondents address the person you're typing uh, your letter to so I've just removed that um, names the name there um, and I don't bold it and likewise I don't bold the date either so take that off but what I do here and this is the reason why I've put it on this side is I get the date I put in some I enter a few times so that my date is at the bottom of my address okay then what I do is I do a couple of spaces um, and then I start with my salutation so the salutation is it depends on oh and also we need to left align so the salutation depends a lot on who you're writing to and how well you know them if you know them at all 
So let me just remove that. So if I don't know the person, but I know the person's name, but I don't know him personally, I might put dear Mr. Smith, comma. If, however, I know the person, then I would put dear John, comma. Now this is important because I'll show you at the back end when you um, when you come to the uh, complimentary closing what you need to put and why okay so before I move on let's just deal with these lines in this um, table here so you might not know this or you might know this but what you can do is if you right click and you go to table properties and you can go to borders and shading and you can see here the setting so you've got here it's got this line you can have setting none so if you click that then the lines disappear click OK and OK and it just disappears so you will know it's there but when it prints nobody else will know that you've ever used a table and it just aligns everything really nicely and makes it look very neat so carrying on with letter then you've got dear John and the next thing you would do is you would uh, input your body text. So I haven't got any body text to show you. Um, I just wanted this to be a quick video. But what I've got here is just an example, a placeholder. So what you're going to add in would be the body text. And in the first paragraph, <clears throat> you would have your introduction. So you would introduce the um, letter um, and, and the, the reason for the letter. In the second paragraph, you would have the main body of the letter or the issue that you're addressing. And in the third paragraph, you would have your closing remarks or and or your desired outcome, especially if it's in the case of a complaint. Now, what I just omitted to tell you was often what people do, they'll say, well, what about a, a reference? Um, some people put references um, up here uh, underneath the uh, name, the uh, name of the recipient. Um, I prefer not to do that because it takes up too much space with all the uh, lines and everything. So what I do is I, I just put it on one line just beneath, beneath the Dear John and before the actual body of the letter. So what I would do is I, I would put either something like this, space, reference, and then give a reference, which would be their reference so they can reference um, your issue and the letter that they may have sent you. Or it might be your account number, especially when you're dealing with financial service providers, for example. So you can have your account number, or you could have your account number, and then your sort code, whatever. Or it could be a bit like an email, really. You could just simply have a subject. And you could put in there. Now here I bold this part. I always bold either the subject or the reference, so it stands out. Um, here beneath the two dear John and the, and the intro to the letter and then you would put whatever the subject is so I put complaint regarding poor quality merchandise and that's just an example then you would write your letter out uh, think very carefully try to structure it as logically as you can and then at the end of that you want to put your complimentary closing now this is what I'm going to uh, show you and explain take very close notes to this part so this is your complimentary closing I see people get this wrong all the time and the way I've been taught is this if you use um, dear John or dear customer service department a named person or named team someone that is that is named and, and could potentially be known to you you would end it with yours sincerely comma okay if however you don't know this person and you want to be a bit more formal so that's a more friendly approach yours sincerely I've seen people use yours truly I think that's a bit dated myself but um, you can do that truly would probably be with with really close friends somebody uh, that you do actually know rather than just an acquaintance if you don't you know the person <clears throat> um, or you use something like instead of dear John uh, if you use dear sir or dear madam or dear sir or madam I've seen that used as well then what you do is you add uh, yours faithfully at the bottom now 
people are always getting this wrong and it does show uh, it, it will kind of bring down your credibility so take that out there and then just to finish off this letter um, what you would then do is you would put in your um, type your name say my name is Gareth Thomas and then you you might add I don't normally if it's a personal letter but if, if you're writing in the capacity of something you might put um, director for example or chief executive officer or whatever and then you would sign your name between in in the space here this is where after you've printed your letter you would sign your name and that is your letter ready to send away to the recipient so I hope that helps and if you have any questions or comments please do uh, leave a comment in the boxes below on the um, on my YouTube page uh, be happy to take any uh, any feedback uh, in response to this uh, lesson and um, good luck with your letter writing if you found it useful please feel free to forward it um, add it to your websites and you know if you have a training thing or even um, subscribe to my channel I'll be updating my channel with more uh, useful information and how to's so thank you very much and this is Gareth Thomas signing out